Okay, so I'm going to put my glassine. I'm just taping that to my drawing board. You, when you're working with charcoal, well, any, any medium you're working with, you don't want the oils of your skin on the artwork. It is not archival. Bonus for this, I'm leaving the background blank. If I smudge this or if I get my hand, let's say I wear hand lotion all the time. If I get lotion or let's say my hands were weirdly greasy, let's pretend I cook and I had grease in my hands. I don't know. But if my hands got greasy and I touch that, it's going to leave a grease mark and that is not coming off. That would suck, especially being that I'm auctioning this. So what we're going to do is put something on there to protect it from smudges. It keeps your hands clean and it is going to protect the artwork or the paper from your non-archival skin grease. That's disgusting. Okay, for the charcoal pencils that I'm using, I'm using Generals. All the, the supplies that I'm using are listed in the video description. Those are, I think they're all affiliate links down there. I've got the Generals. This one is the extra soft. I'll also be using a medium one. And then I've got the Generals white. So there are several different types in these with the charcoal pencils. The the soft, the soft, extra soft, very, very similar. You're not going to notice a huge difference. It's going to smudge better. The softer the lead, the more it smudges out. So it's easier to get dark. It's easier to get it like into the crevice of all of this. If you want finer detail, I'm going to switch to a more hard lead. So the medium I like for finer detail, it's a harder lead. It doesn't smudge as well. They're both pretty dark. Like when you're talking about charcoal, it's not a huge, huge de 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 uh, difference in how which one's darker. Like with graphite, you go with an 8B, it's going to be way darker than a 4-H. With the charcoal, extra soft versus medium, the darkness is similar, like not a huge difference. It's more an issue of which one's going to smudge and blend better. And I'm going to start with the, this one is the medium, just to sketch that out. You can see I can go right over where I had the white outline. It just covers it completely. I don't need this to be absolutely perfect. Close is good enough for this. And when I do charcoal sketches, I'm not going for so realistic that you can't tell that it's artwork. Like when I do colored pencils, sometimes you could, it, people have to take a double take. Like, was that a photograph? Is that artwork or uh, drawing? With this, it, you're not, or the same thing with some of the paintings. With this, it's obvious that it's a sketch. I like the sketchy look when I work with charcoal. Personal preference there. You can make charcoal look like a like an absolute photograph, but for me, this will work. So again, this is the medium, so it's not gonna be as smudgy. Is that a word? I'm making it a word. We're just gonna sketch that in. Whenever you're working on something, it's a good idea to work on one small area at a time. Don't try working on everything all at once where I'm doing the beak and do then over the eye and then the feathers all like, trying to say where all do I need that specific color and put that everywhere value, I guess in this case. Don't, that ends up getting very overwhelming and your work usually doesn't come out looking very good. Question from, Let's see, D Lynn Creative Arts asks, what is your opinion on charcoal powder and will the link to the live stream be available on Patreon? Ooh, I'll put it on Patreon for you. Somebody remind me if I forget. So let's go through here. Actually, speaking of Patreon, I actually have Patreon ads. So wait, how would you word that? Today's video is brought to you by our sponsor, who's me. So here, I can actually show you while I'm thinking about it, an ad. So Matt helped me out with these. Our first ad, Huh? I'm going to keep going until I succeed or die. Harry Potter. Um, that looks legit. My, my classes are legit. These ads may not be. Now I'm going to go ahead and blend the white. It will just smudge right into that gray. So you can see I pulled the black. If you've got your reference photo, way farther than it needs to be, but it doesn't matter because they're going to smudge together. Oh, and Charcoal powder. So the charcoal powder, yes, it's wonderful. If you've got it, use it. I need to get some. I'm out. I've used it. It's so nice to work with. Not so much on something like little details, but for like a big blurring of a background, wonderful. I definitely need to pick some up. Now, when I use a blending tool like this, this, I keep one end for the white pencil and one end for the black. It just makes it easier so I'm not overly like bleeding the two into each other where I don't want it. Okay. So see how those just smudge really nice. They have these cool little rocket ship looking things. What is it, a Giotto? But you can use this instead of blowing on the work and accidentally spitting on it, which also not archival and it does stay in the work. I can blow the dust off with that. So those are pretty handy. So we're just gonna keep smudging on here. And I'm not worrying about the detail. The detail can come on top of this. I just want to get this mostly blocked in. And I can use the, the charcoal that's already on 
the the shading tool, it picked some of that up so I can smudge some of it just with what oops, wrong thing, with what's there. I don't have to always add charcoal like from the pencil to the paper. Sometimes just what's on your shading tool will be enough. We'll go ahead and pull this up. And you're just gonna work back and forth layer until it looks good. And remember, if you don't want it to smudge as much, switch over to your medium pencil. The soft is good for the really smudgy areas. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of get a base layer on the entire beak and then I'll go on top and put in some details. Now notice uh, as I move this pencil, I'm moving it the direction of the beak so that if I end up with lines, sketchy lines, which I will, this will keep those lines, Go, it'll just look like it's a part of the beak. If I have a line going the wrong direction, it's gonna look a little weird if that stays in. Paul said, is it necessary to seal charcoal drawings with fixative? What happens if we don't seal them? Everyone's definition of necessary is gonna be a bit different on this. I would certainly recommend it and I will be doing that with Spectra Fix. So let me grab these. After I get a few layers, I will be misting it with Spectra Fix. And then this is actually, show you better. So this is the product that I use and I put it in a fine mist sprayer. And the reason for that is if you just spray out of the bottle it comes in, it you have heavy droplets come out that can sometimes leave a mark. This is more likely to give you very soft, like an even, even mist. So it's better for that. If you don't, so charcoal, same thing with pastel. Pastel artists are going to have the same thing. I know a lot of pastel artists who don't seal their stuff. I don't agree with it because over the years that will start to settle. And if you talk to a framer as the artwork has sat framed like behind glass, you'll start seeing a powder from the pastel or in this case charcoal on the mat. And that's going to happen even with a fixative. Without a fixative is even worse. It's constantly kind of falling off the paper. It's not all that permanent. So I want to use personally, it's a must for me. I want to use something that's going to make that charcoal adhere to the paper as long term as possible. So you're going to get different answers from different different artists for sure. One of the negatives of using a fixative is it can darken it up a lot depending on which fixative you use. And that's why I use Spectrafix. I don't find that it darkens anything. If it does, it's very, very little or if I put it on way too heavy. But this will help keep it long, the work in good condition long term. So I, is it a must? Eh, depends on who you ask. For me, yes. For, uh, for many, many others, no. So I wouldn't even say it's like for sure a right or a wrong answer. I'm just not comfortable selling something that I don't feel is going to last long term enough. So now that we've got our base in here, we can go ahead and start in on doing details. We can get the, the brighter highlights. And again, we don't need this to look like a, a photograph. I'm not going that detailed. It's going to have a sketchier look, but we also want it realistic. We're definitely going for realism here. So... We want to pay attention, and in order to do that, you've got a few things. Keep your edges clean. Keep So like the beak, the edges here, we want that nice and clean. The other thing is pay attention to your values. That's going to make a bigger difference in your artwork looking realistic than anything else. Dark's dark enough. Light's light enough. This is going to give you that more realistic look. It also makes the work more interesting to look at. But we're going to go through now and get some of these little details, little sketchy marks on the beak. The beak is similar to fingernails. If your fingernails start to kind of peel up, it's kind of how birds' beaks are. So if you think of it like that, it gives you an idea of what we're trying to accomplish there. Some little details. Now, I don't want to make it sound like charcoal can't do super, super real, like super photorealistic. It can. Like you can go as detailed as you want. I personally, when I use it, like it for that fast, looser look, that more artsy look. And that is completely personal preference. Now, don't overblend. That's another thing. We don't want to lose our light. We want to make sure we see where there are lights and darks. One thing that a lot of people will do is they learn to blend, and then they think everything needs to be really, really blended, and then you lose, like, you lose it. You, you don't have your lights and your darks anymore. So I'm going to make a few little lines coming the direction of the beak. I may come through and do additional work later, but that's about, oh no, I lied. A little bit in here. And I would rather see you get super, super, like hype your contrast up. Your dark's a little too dark. Your light's a little too light. I would rather see that than boring mid-range where it feels safe. It's, it's boring. Get those darks darker, those lights lighter. That's going to look better. Okay. 
Now I'm using my extra soft. I'll get a little bit into that dark, dark spot. Smudge that out a bit, and that's actually a little bit too, a little bit darker than what I want. So I'm going to take the white right on top of it. The cool thing with charcoal, this is such a good medium. If you're learning to do any anything, let's say you're practicing feathers, practicing dog fur, practicing portraits, charcoal is such a fast medium that it makes it very easy to get the hang of these things because you can. It, it's forgiving. It's fast and forgiving. So you screw something up, just go back over it. It's not a big deal. Whereas like oil painting, you've got a dry time and smudging and it just, it's a whole thing or any other medium. I mean, it's always going to be a whole thing trying to fix mistakes. Charcoal is just so forgiving. So it's really good for practicing and obviously finished art. I feel like I'm a charcoal salesperson today. All the great things. I just, it's funny because I used to use it all the time. It was one of my primary mediums and I stopped because I felt it was really messy. I think it was the paper I was using. I don't know. I'm back in love with it again. So we've got a highlight over the nose here or the nostril. Got, this needs to be a lot brighter. So this entire area over the beak should be lighter than the majority of the beak itself. This is that skin around it. Again, don't feel like everything needs to be overly blended. It's okay if you have that sketchy look. Now we need to get some of the shading. Actually, I'm going to switch over to my medium pencil so I can get better detail or cleaner detail. Okay, let's go back to the medium. I'm just going to clean up some of these edges a little bit. And it doesn't need to be perfect, but we do want it to be close. Kind of get this wispy look, moving these feathers back along this edge. I can get a few little highlights with the white in there, not too much. So same thing, we're just going to keep this kind of sketchy. Make sure it's going the right direction. Let the gray of the paper too. Don't feel like you need to cover all of the paper. We're using toned or colored paper. Let it work for you. That's a good thing. It's one of the benefits of using the colored paper. Let it do it like it's doing some of your work for you. Let it. And I'm just going to lightly go over that. But as I move the shading tool, I'm going to move it in the direction of those feathers. And I'm going to leave that for now. That kind of blocks in. Yeah, I'm going to skip over and work on the eye a bit and then work my way out. There's no real reason. You can work from one area all the way over if you want to. For me, I usually will jump in over the eye and then work my way out once I get around the beak done. I don't have a good reason for you on that. It's just how I always do it. Okay, so let's block in where we know the pupil is going to be. I don't have a lot of detail drawn in here, so I've got to kind of pay attention to what I'm doing. I'm going to have to add a whole bunch. One of the things you can do, I've heard people say they didn't like to work in charcoal or pastels for the sole purpose. Now, I'm not a pastel person. Those are too messy for me. Just because of the scratchy sound it made, drove some people crazy, you can put on headphones. You won't even hear it if you put on music and headphones. I used to do that, not because I was trying to hide the sound. I was honestly just not aware it made a sound. So when people were complaining about that, I was kind of surprised because I had not experienced that, but it was because the headphones. So we'll darken that. Smooth out the center. Now, another cool thing you can do, and I'm not set up to do that right now, you can take a water or a paintbrush with water and go over it and make a really clean edge. So if you have something you want really sharp, just a little bit of water on a paintbrush, like a, a filbert, or not a filbert, a tackle and bristle brush are my favorites for that. Just a little bit of water and you can get really crisp edges. I'm just going to smudge what's already there. It's kind of blocking in about where things are going to go, and then I'll, I'll clean up and sharpen things up as we move on. I'm 
Oops. See, look, I screwed up. I touched it. You just smudge it out. Not even a problem. So forgiving. Like there's really nothing besides ripping your paper you can do that wouldn't you couldn't fix. I'm just going to smudge that around. Okay, let's start getting a little bit of that highlight in there. Make sure you get a lot of variation in those values. That mid-range there is, and I've told this story many times, but it's still relevant. Back when I used to be on, uh, it doesn't exist anymore, but there was an Italian greyhound forum when I used to show my dogs. I, I sold a lot of pet portraits through that site. And there were a few other artists that were really amazing. And there was one woman and she was very good. I mean, she was so accurate, but she didn't have any super light lights or dark darks. Mostly, she'd get some lights, but mostly her stuff was just complete mid-range boring to look at. And it was weird because she was so skilled. Her work was so good, but she just didn't get the attention. Some of the other artists who really didn't have the technical skill that she did, but it was boring to look at. Get those values in there. That is going to make such a difference in somebody continuing to look at your work. I mean, if you've got your stuff at a gallery and it's up against a lot of other artists, you're trying to get people to look at your work for as long as possible. Get that contrast. And right now, we're just building form. One of the ways I like to explain it when you are doing something like this, think of it as sculpting. We th have a tendency to look at drawing or working in something like this as it's just drawing. It's flat. Yeah, but we're trying to make it not look flat. We're sculpting. We're creating form and shadows. And you that is what we're doing as we build up. The other thing on this, I like to let, I'm working on the rough side of the paper. I like to let some of that texture like really work for me on creating detail. Like this area of the skin by the eye is really kind of bumpy. Let it be bumpy. That's actually a good thing. We've got this really rough texture in a lot of this. Let it be there on some of this, especially around the skin where we want it to be rough. Let it stay that way. Don't try to smooth every single thing out on this. If you want something really, really smooth, then a different paper or a different medium might be better. But for this, let that roughness work for you. Let it create some of that really interesting texture. We got some little dots coming through here. And I'm going to clean this up and we're going to start pulling some detail right around the edge. Got these little eyelash dot guys here. So let's just put some dots in there. Now, the areas that I'm working right now, these are the areas that are going to, by a long shot, take the longest. That wasn't the button I meant to hit. That's going to take the longest by far. The eye, the beak, this is all that tiny detail. The rest of this will feel like it goes really fast once we get through this section. And then once we get a, a kind of loose base, we can come in and clean stuff up a bit. I'm going to lighten up just a bit around the bottom here. I don't want to overblend. I really like how sketchy that is. Okay. I'm going to pull this shadow down though. Keep that edge clean. Okay. I'm gonna now start working on the feathers around the head. So I don't need to have my hand quite as stable so I can go ahead and kind of move the paper out of the way and my hand will be more at a distance as I work here. Are the boys doing well? Yep, they're energetic as always. So that's going well. Okay. Extra soft is what I'm looking for. Where is that pencil? Here we go. So we've got these, this small area in here, and it doesn't really matter if you do the black pencil first or the white. It's not going to make a huge difference. And as I move this, I want to make sure that these feathers are going the right direction. Don't I don't want to just scribble this in. 
I think this is the noise that a lot of people disliked on that were com- not a lot, but a handful of people were complaining about it. So I wonder how many of you wouldn't have even noticed the annoying noise had I not pointed it out. Maybe I shouldn't have said anything. Okay, let's just get this whole dark area mapped out. This, I'm going to be more solid. This doesn't have a whole lot of feathers in there, and I'm going to blend it anyway. So we're just holding the pencil to the side. A charcoal block would be faster and actually be good for that, but I forgot to put some out. Now, don't get too worked up on making every feather exact. It, it's not going to make the work better. Close is close enough. Okay, let's blend that a bit. What are you doing? I hear noises over there. Oh, no, I think it's actually not even them. I think it's my husband in the other room. I thought the boys were making weird noises. Okay, so just this nice big black, we're just kind of blocking in that. And then we've got another area here. I'm going to go ahead and block that in. And then we're going to go in and do what I was talking about with creating the feathers and paying attention to the direction they go in. Just get those darkest areas blended. Let's see. We've got some of the dark through here. We'll go ahead and pull that down. And I'm trying to look at the reference photo. Let's say you came out here. Then there was the really bright area here. I think this could come down a little further. See how you can just rework an area? Like it's just crazy to me how easy, when you're used to working in colored pencil, it is just crazy how easy it is to make adjustments and changes when you're working in, in, um, in charcoal. We're just gonna use what's on the brush here. See, this is where that charcoal powder, that would actually come in handy for something like this, just to shade in loosely. This whole area is actually really dark too. So let's go ahead and get that in there. And then when these start building the shading tools, if they start building more charcoal than what you want, I just keep an old rag, or in this case, it's a Viva paper towel and just wipe it off. It'll clean it up just fine. You don't need to, actually, that's a good thing to talk about. So with these, People will think that they will, you need to keep them sharp. And I've seen people actually run these through a pencil sharpener. Don't do that. You ruin them. Or the sandpaper blocks that you get. Oh, do I have any over here? Yeah, I do. These, not for sharpening your blending tool. These are for sharpening or getting your pencils to a finer point. Your pencils, well, any pencil. Not these. These not these. So don't, don't, just don't. That will actually ruin it. What happens when you use that on one of these is it makes this like a fluff ball. It's just fuzzy. It's got lines through it. And so when you go to shade, it doesn't shade quite right. It, it just, you ruin them. These don't need to be sharp. And if it gets to the point where it's so dull and you wish it was pointy again, get a new one. They're like 20 cents or 50 cents. I don't know how much they are. They're cheap. You get a pack of them for not much. They're very, very inexpensive. So I usually will have some that are more dull, some that are more sharp, but don't, sharpening them is just wasting them. It, it, you're not going to get the results that you're thinking you will. So let's go through here. Okay. We're getting some good shadows in here and then we can start like this, this is the fun part that's fun to me, how fast it will just start looking better once we get these base layers in. Got some on his shoulder here. I can't see how I'm just, I'm mainly just 
blocking in my general shadows. Now you can break this up into a smaller area too. You don't have to kind of fill in all of the darker shadows at once. I find it to be easier because this next step I kind of do all at once, which almost sounds like it's contradictory to what I was saying earlier in the video about um, working on one small section at a time. Yeah, for the detail stuff. But for this, I can just map out where my general lights and darks go for this layer. Okay, we've got, let's see, we've got a lot of detailing in here on the beak. Let's see that. We've got more white that comes down there. We'll go ahead and shade that in. Okay. I think we're almost at the point where we can start doing the detail stuff. Before we do that, let's go ahead and take a look at another ad from our sponsor, me. I'm the, uh, um, I'm the sponsor. So let's see what ad Matt helped me with next. Not even these lessons could help my acting skills. I mean, I'm not mad about that one. That That's pretty accurate, even though she didn't give me very good stars. But, you know, it's... It's accurate. Okay. My, my sponsored ads are not very good. The point is sign up to Patreon for as little as $4 a month. You get access to all of my longer tutorials. Maybe I should just verbally tell you guys about the ad or, you know, what I, I'm promoting versus my um, Matt helping me with reviews. Don't know where he got those reviews from. Okay. So now we've got a little bit, actually, I want to do a little bit more shading here, pulling that down. Okay. So I'm going to go and start back up with the head. And this is just so, keep it kind of loose. Don't feel like you need to make every little thing exact. Close is close enough. And this is where I love, like if you are struggling with dog hair, feathers, anything, try doing it in charcoal. You'll go through it very quickly and you can start getting the motion, the movement of the feathers, the movement of the, the fur. Let's say you're having a hard time with water, making water look natural or moving in a stream. Practice it with charcoal. You can very quickly try a bunch of things that don't work. So you learn not to do those those things again, doing, making mistakes is a huge part of learning to improve things anyway, but you can move on to the parts that go like figuring out what makes things work faster. So definitely a really good medium for getting the hang of that. But again, here I'm worrying about the movement of the feathers, which direction are they going in? See how they almost, I want to say scale. But then I don't because it does look kind of like the scales of a fish coming through. However, people have a tendency to overdo that and make little loops that look like kids' scales on fishes or how a kid would do it. And that is not, it's not cute. Don't do that. So when I say scale, don't take it too literally. Okay. So we've got a really bright area here. Notice how it curves this direction. Another thing to point out, when you're working with anything that's like nature, you're not going to have a lot of really straight lines. The, the straight lines are going to be man-made things, brick walls, walls, uh, fences, that sort of thing. But when you get into nature, whether it be feathers, grass, trees, even tree trunks, they're very rarely perfectly straight. Everything here I'm doing is at least slightly curved. Not going to be a lot of really straight lines. Now watch these feathers too. They start to move almost in these rows. And this is what I was talking about where you're, you're just getting the hang of the movement there. Let some of the dark show through. We're not trying to cover that all the way. And we're going to come back and add even more darks in on top of that. So, so don't worry about that not being dark enough yet. See how these are clumped? And this is going to be similar if you're doing animal fur, any animal fur. The, you'll get these clumps of fur, or in this case, feathers, not, not just individual strands. You do individual strands, it looks like confetti. It's not so cute. So as we move here, look at how it changes direction again. Now, these are getting too light, so I will definitely blend these to tone it down. 
Notice how often I'm looking at my reference photo? Just constantly. You should spend more time looking at your reference photo than you do your actual artwork. Oh good, my neighbor's dogs are out barking. That's not distracting at all. Can you guys hear it when they bark out there? So now this, see how this whole area right now is the same value. Light is the same everywhere. That's something that we'll be correcting as we go through. Pretty much still just blocking out where the lights and darks go. We wouldn't want to leave it that way right now. By leaving it where it's the brightness or light and versus dark is the same all the way through, it makes it look very, very flat besides just being incorrect altogether. Pull those out, follow the direction. These guys are really short in here. And actually I probably should have put the darks in first. I'm gonna have to go back through with darks. Not that it's a huge deal which one goes first, but yeah. We've got more little dots in here where it's super short and just like the, the little hairs right there are facing at the viewer. And so you're just getting the tips, the dots. That's what we're doing um, there. And you'll do that a lot when you do animal fur too. Wherever the fur is aimed, like usually I'll see it like under a, a cheetah, under the ear, that fur will be aimed. If they're looking at this, this way, that fur will be aimed at the viewer. You get a lot of dots. Dots are your friend. You can really see all of my values just kind of disappearing right now. And we'll bring that back. We're getting a little too curved there. Talked about not wanting too many straight lines. I'm overdoing it. Now one of the methods that a lot of people like to do for getting the drawing on their, their piece is to use the grid method. You can use any method you want to get it on there. I don't like the grid though because usually, it is just so common for people who use the grid method, their finished result has this very boxy square look. Start noticing that. There's an artist I follow on Instagram. She's amazing, but her work is too angular. Everything is. And it's like, it's weird because the work is so realistic to see those angular lines. And you might say, oh, it's stylized. No, that's just typical of people who, excuse me, who use a grid method. So I really don't like that. I would rather see you if you want a freehand, freehand on something else than use a projector or a um, tracing and transfer paper to transfer the image to the, the piece to keep it clean or just trace in general. But the I don't like the end result that most people get using the grid. Occasionally, someone will do a great job with it and it works really well for them. It seems like the smaller the grid, the worse it is, the more angular the artist tends to come out with. But it's a really weird phenomenon I've noticed with people who are using that grid method. You don't, there's like the roundness that we're getting that is missing in a lot of it. Like it's kind of round, but it's also kind of angular. It's a very odd thing. So it's not something that I like, I like to see students. I mean, use whatever method you enjoy. That really is what matters more than anything. But I, as far as getting better results, I really don't like the results most to get using the grid method. It's really obvious on portraits. It's a very odd, like, very odd look. We've got this really light area in here. We can just fill some of these in more solid. You don't have to push very hard with this pencil. Actually, you wouldn't want to because it'll probably break on you. Okay, we've got a question from the Hedgehog. What's an alternative to those grids using a 9H pencil? What do you, what do you mean? An alternative? I don't, 
I don't know how the pencil and the grid is relating to each other. Um, I would say if you wanted to freehand, freehand on another piece of paper, then use tracing paper, trace it, and then transfer it so you get a clean transfer to your image. Um, that way you don't have eraser marks and damage that way. Or you can freehand it on something else and use a projector to project it onto the image. Or you can just project and trace it. That works too. Any method that you like to use is fine. It's just that the, that grid, it is the most... If any of you have done the grid and you know what I'm talking about and you've had that result happen with you and are willing to let me show in a video, please send it to me because I don't want to just take random people's art off the internet, obviously, and be like, this is what I'm talking about. But um, I mean, you can just look at artists who are using grid method. But yeah, it, I don't, the 9H pencils, I wouldn't draw with a 9H. That's going to be really scratchy. That's too light and it's really scratchy and it's going to be more likely to indent your paper or leave like a little scratch. Like I don't use a 9H very often. That's for very light areas and you can almost not see it at all. So I wouldn't say that's the ideal alternative. So as we move in here, you'll see this will start overlapping those dark areas. Once I get most of this mapped out, we'll start working on the values and correcting that. But I do want to smudge some of this out now. Just soften that up. Yeah, and I'm sure some people will get annoyed and think of artists that are, they themselves have a great result with, with the grid method. Yeah, it can happen. It's just so common to have people for some reason follow this real boxy look. So I'm not saying it's not possible. Any method can get you something good. It just, I think that causes more problems than helps. And it's not an issue of, oh, it's cheating. Because I've heard people do that too, where they say any any method you use, oh, that's cheating. It's not cheating. Any method you use, what, I don't care if you trace, it's art. Whatever creates good art is what I'm all for. That's my problem with the grid method. I don't feel it really creates that like as good as you could get using other methods. Okay, I'm trying to go through this. I, If you're following along, you may want to go a bit slower than what I'm doing. I want to try to get this done a little bit, get caught up a bit more. Probably should have done a slightly smaller project. Because we definitely need time to go through the Q&As and I want to talk about the AI art. One of the things you may notice me doing too a lot as I'm working, I keep squinting at it. it. It's the equivalent of looking at it from a distance to see what it, like, it gives you the same effect. Is there something I need to adjust? Is something standing out too much? Is my movement going right? And this just starts getting bigger. So I'm going to use my pencil to the side here. is not so much with the little details. I'm excited. We're almost to my favorite part where it starts getting the little details and working on values. I just, it's my favorite. I always love the end of these. And I don't want a ton of detail down here because I want to keep the attention more towards the face. So as I move out, I start using less and less detail and I'll start intentionally smudging things out a bit more. Um, what are you here? We've got a little bit of feathers other lines so this is the photo you can see a lot more crisp lines in here I don't want mine to be that crisp I want this to be much softer remember you're an artist you are not a photocopier it doesn't need to be exact you want to make yours you put your signature essentially on it your style what do you like the look of like when I work with charcoal I love that sketchy feel I want that and I like the way that I can soften things out as I move away from the face that's one of the fun things I get to do as an artist versus taking a photo not so easy to do or I mean you can I guess you can photoshop it but okay 
smudge some of these, and we are almost at the fun part of making it look good. So close. And you can see when we zoom in here, you can see that a lot of the dots, the, the texture from the paper. Let it show. Don't feel like everything has to be blended smooth. I love that look when it comes to charcoal. This is interesting. YouTube is giving me notifications of this would be a good time to, to play an ad, which is new that didn't used to do that. It's one where they play their ad where I would make money from that. But instead, why don't I tell you a little bit about Patreon? Who is our sponsor for today? And by Patreon, I mean my Patreon. If you are not already signed up for as little as $4 a month, you get access to all of my longer tutorials. I have over 300 available immediately when you sign up and it other bonuses and such. And I can show you what others are saying about it. Team LaCree obviously. I'm a dork. Okay, we'll go back to work. Hey, on the, this case, YouTube is the one who told me I should play an ad. They didn't say their ad. I think it was implied, but I'd rather you guys be stuck with my, my stupid cheesy ads than YouTube ads. Okay. So I have a water brush and I'm going to use this just around the edges of the eyes where I want it to be a little bit more crisp, just a little. And you do not want a lot of water to do this. Just a little. There are just a few areas that are a bit bumpier than what I want it to be. I know I was just saying that bumps are good. Yeah, but not all of them. Just a few clean edges and it just smooths that out. I also want to do that over here just a little. It won't be that dark when it dries. Okay. That's really it for where I wanted this super, super like sharp, sharp edge. Whoops. So now values. Let's start with a beak. Actually, be careful too. Um, now that I think about it, I'm gonna wait since I used water here while I'm okay, I'm not that close. You don't want to, wherever it's wet, do not move the pencil over it. You'll damage the paper and not get results that are very cute. So I can work on areas around that now. So we've got some lighter areas here. And then I want to, actually, let me move the paper out of the way. Okay, so now I've got a lot of these darker areas in here. I'm just going to move my pencil under. If you look at the reference photo, it's kind of under a lot of the white areas. So I'm going to focus on that, but let it blend into the white a little too so that those get toned down. I'm using the medium. I want the soft. There we go. See, it's a little darker than the medium, not a ton. But I want to be able to smudge this a bit better. And that's why I wanted the main reason I want to use the soft here. Let's smooth that out. So you can see on that reference photo, this whole area should be a little bit darker. I can actually just smudge over a lot of that. Look how it softens that out so nicely. Okay, we've got a few darker bits in here, some of these longer lines. And at this point, most of what I may smudge, it's just a little bit. It just, you'll see here, just a couple strokes, just soften it. I'm not doing what we did in the beginning where I had to keep reworking the area over and over again to really smooth that out. We've already done that. This is just a little bit here and there to soften the transition. The 
this whole area needs actually a decent amount more detail. Let's pull that white down. It needs to overlap here a bit. So we'll smooth that out. I'm going to use the medium just for this area in here. We've got this bit of detailing. And actually here is way too dark. So I'm going to very lightly go over it with a white pencil. I don't want to make it as white as the other areas, but I do want to lighten it up just a bit. Okay, another thing that we've got are all the little hairs in through here. So we'll grab the medium, start pulling these longer guys. Watch where these curve. And actually, I need to lighten this whole area up. I'm just gonna use the side of the pencil. I'm gonna smudge that and then I'll come on top with the um, black. Let's clean this up. Actually, I think it can go even a lot lighter. Let's push a little bit harder. Now, luckily this pencil's not super sharp right now, so I can push it pretty hard without it breaking. Okay. Blend that a bit. I wanna make sure this is clean. Now we're gonna take that medium. Get some little hairs in here. See why we needed the bottom area to be so light first. See how we start building these details and already what a difference we're starting to see. This area needs to be a lot lighter. That's another tip when it comes to values. If you have an area that doesn't feel like it's getting dark enough, like right here was not getting dark enough, um, this area there, it's because what was next to it wasn't light enough. I couldn't go darker than that. I had to lighten up what was next to it. all these little guys back here. Now this is all back to what I was saying before, where if it's too light, that'll um, flatten it out. So we'll just lightly go over that. I needed the detail. I just don't want it to be that much brighter than the other areas. Using, yeah, that's the extra soft. Okay, this is, there we go. And I don't have the paper there, but my hands are not resting on it anymore. So that's why I'm able to get away with that. How many of you are cringing at that sound right now? That's even getting a little bit annoying for me. And I'm not super sen sensitive to that. Okay. Softening that out. I'm not worrying about which direction it goes because I just want it soft in general here. Get a little bit of detailing on the feathers just around the edges.
And this is a fun thing too. If you've not done charcoal, if you like to do art shows, this is something that I did there where I could sit and draw something, like spend maybe a half an hour on something and sell it for 40 bucks, $50. Um, I had people offer a lot more depending on what I was doing. It depends on how it comes out, obviously. But you can it can be a way to attract people to your booth you don't have to bring all your painting supplies your i mean gosh if i bring everything i need for colored pencil paint any other medium it's a ton of stuff and i'm not dragging that along with the artwork that i'm trying to sell i can bring this though this is an easy setup what three or four pencils maybe a couple extra in case i break some because i'm gonna break some um my spectra fix and some paper and it was i was doing jellyfish so i didn't even have to have anything really pre-drawn out um jellyfish and octopuses so yeah you can actually do do decent selling i was doing one the one year i did that i sold more in that than i think i did in prints but people really enjoyed and it was the people who stood and watched while i was doing it those were the ones who wanted to purchase it if i had the ones that i pre-drew i had left over from la the previous year i brought them with me to this last aquashella they eventually sold but not as quick when people watched me do it at these shows they sold really fast so that's a, a really cool thing to do if you do art shows where you're sitting there at a booth it draws attention to your booth too Okay, let's see. We've got a shadow that comes here and here. We'll have a whole bunch of little feathers sticking out there too. See, I've got a bit of a sketchy look. I'm gonna leave it. I'm, I'm okay. Let's zoom in so you can see that a bit more. But as I get through some of this, you don't feel like everything has to be perfectly smooth. If you've got that sketchy, it just looks so cool with charcoal. A question I'm often asked, how do you know when it's done? When I can hang it on my wall and not pick it apart. When I can look at it and be happy. Like that's kind of my, my standard is if I hang this right now, am I going to find a million things wrong with it? And what I'll often do, and I will definitely do this on this one, there's a very good chance I'll go spend another five minutes, 10 minutes on it tomorrow after I'm done because I need to come back with fresh eyes. I'll probably notice some random little thing that no one else will notice, but I will. But come back with fresh eyes, spend a few more minutes on something or a couple hours, depending on what your work, this one will only be about 10 minutes, but um, spend a little bit more time. You'll notice things you didn't notice before. But that's pretty much my rule on, am I done? Do I hate it? Am I going to sit and pick it apart? Can I hang this on my wall right now and be proud of it? That's kind of my, my standard for deciding if something is done. I'm going to push harder and really get some of these whites to stand out now. Not all of them. We just have a few spots. I want some of these to be more muted. I love it. We've get this this very sketchy look in there. It's just, I love that about charcoal. I don't know why. Like if, if you're working on a canvas, I don't want to see the tooth of the canvas. If I'm working in colored pencil, I don't want to see the tooth of the paper. I don't know why I love that look with charcoal. It just feels so artsy. Maybe because I'm so used to making everything look more, um, like everything's so clean. And then I'll end up, as long as the person who, who is bidding that wins, I will send this out on Saturday or uh, Sunday. It'll be, to, it'll be in the mail this weekend so that next week it'll, it'll come USPS. Okay, let's go back to, we have all these little lines now. The other thing with things being done, don't get to the point where you never finish anything because you always think nothing's ever done. And I, I definitely had students that did that. Sometimes it's just time to move on to the next piece. Now, I don't mean abandon it and never finish things. I've also had those students. Um, you definitely want to get them finished, but don't be such a perfectionist that you never finish anything. Okay, let's see. I'm trying to sort through what's what. Okay. 
comes down, goes down there. Chicken lips. This actually comes way down. And then we've got all the little feathers in here. There we go, much better. Okay, now we've got some of these little guys that start layering. The detail doesn't need to be perfect. Get those values in there though. I'm gonna hold the pencil to the side a little bit for the bigger chunks. Gives a bit of a softer look. For some of these dots, it'd probably be easier just to, yeah, there we go. Get it with the shading tool. Okay. This area has a lot more with the white. Almost there. We have a lot of these little feathers I'm missing, the little long ones, little specks. Variation in those values. Again, that, that's really what I'm focusing on at this point. Really paying attention lights and darks. It's not about the detail. I mean, I say that and I'm doing a lot of detail, but not that much really. I mean, look how quick we've done this. We're, I, what, about an hour ago is when I really started in on it once I was done talking. So getting, it's about your values, your lights and your darks. The detail is not the thing that is going to make your work look more realistic. It's your values. I mean, having accurate detail and having detail, I'm not saying there's no place for it, but if your values aren't there, it doesn't matter how perfect your drawing is. It doesn't matter how perfect your colors, anything else. If your values are wrong, it's 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 a cartoony look. If you want that more realistic look, you want to get those values. Light's light enough, dark's dark enough. And I know I say this over and over again, but it's so important. I really want to want everyone to get that like stuck in their head. Just hear that constantly when you're working. Get those lights light enough, dark's dark enough. And it's scary because when you're making something really dark, that it's like, is it too dark? Am I overdoing this? Usually not. Usually it's not dark enough. I understand wanting to keep it safe, but it's going to look so much better if you start working on getting those values correct. Really hype those up. I want these whites to look lighter, so I darkened what was right next to it. Look at where the light is really catching right here. I'm pretty happy because that, what I'm seeing on screen is very, like, I mean, it looks just like what mine in person looks like. That was such a problem. It was one of the reasons I didn't like the live streams. I couldn't get the, the quality there. These new, these are the Elgato cam, uh, their face cams, and I'm pretty happy with it. They have a newer one I'm going to get, but it's not available yet, so I'll, I'll be upgrading another still. But I, I'm really pleased. This is really accurate to what I'm seeing. I'm going to smudge those out. Now you can really see too what I'm talking about where the initial coming up with the, the base layers, it doesn't look great. It takes the longest amount of time though. Once you get into these little things, these little details, it just starts pulling everything together. If you guys have some subject requests, I can't promise I can get it done in the time of a live stream. So I can't do everything, but if you want to leave some suggestions for what you'd like to see in future live streams, especially charcoal, charcoal and acrylics are going to be the easiest to do where I can complete the lesson. 
Those are my two fastest mediums by a long shot. Okay, I don't see a ton extra that I wanna do. I mean, I can sit and fuss over it, but I think I'm getting to that point where I'm gonna wanna come back with fresh eyes tomorrow and make just a few minor changes, kind of what I'm doing now. Just these little changes I'll come through and make little adjustments, but I'm definitely getting to that point where I've stared at it for so long that my eyes are getting a bit blurry. So I think that's where I'm gonna leave it. I will sign it though. Let's see. So this is two things when I come up with signing my work. Hold on. Oh, here it is. Now in this case, this is gonna be matted. So I need to know where that mat lays. And then I need to figure out, do I want, let's pull this back up. Do I want the signature here? And what I will typically do is hold the pencil about where I might wanna sign it. Or do I want it over on this edge? Actually the camera, you can't really see, come on. Well, you can kind of see. So here, here, I like it better here. So this is where I want to sign that. Hey, the first painting or drawing of 2023. There we go. Now, when you sign things, notice that this is not along the bottom here. And this is a mistake I see a lot of people make when they sign their work, they sign right here. Well, what happens when you go to put the mat, if you signed at that bottom, you're gonna end up covering, the mat will cover some of that. So that's why I wanted to get that placement of the mat before I signed. You typically, whether it be a painting or anything, you don't want it right along the edge there. So there is our finished piece. I have stuff all over my hands. And before we move on, let's go ahead and get another ad in here because um, this video is sponsored by Patreon. So let's see what, go back to our reviews. So good, I didn't even need a cheat, Tom Brady. <laughs> 